and play it from there. Great. So, yes. So how's everybody's Halloween? Good? Everybody's been holding up and hunkering down? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, this colder weather um, is great, but, uh, you know, we're planning to have Thanksgiving outside, and I'm like, if it gets really cold, what's it going to be like to eat outside? You but, just... Yes. Do you have enough of those heating lamps? Yep. Well, we don't, but my, uh, on a walk yesterday, a neighbor volunteered to lend us his, so awesome. might take him up on that. Yeah, probably get a good idea. Really don't want to light any fires right now. <laughs> no. no outback campfires. Yeah, how much longer is the fire season? Jesus. How much longer do we have to? Well, whenever it starts raining, then then we can sort of breathe easy if it ever starts raining. I read that once we get about an inch of rain, um, that's kind of the indicator for a shifting of the season. Oh, it has to be about an inch? That's what I read. Ah, that's too bright. I saw, uh, I don't know if you... See, uh, NPR has a really good program called Nature that uh, Uma Thurman um, narrates. And it, it's really, it's really positive because it shows all these habitats that have been restored. It gives you a good feeling. It's sort of amazing how, uh, how quickly uh, nature can recover if you give it a chance. I mean, this, the, um, so I have a question. So this is being recorded right now and yeah. it's streaming live on YouTube. Okay. All right. That's awesome. so, yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just again, yeah. so you stay very neutral right now. Oh, you know what I just noticed? So the color for my face is a huge difference when, because I always have the night light on, on my um, computer and it takes away the blue. So when it takes away the blue, it makes my face more red. Got it. <laughs> so just figured that one out. Okay. It is 3.29 and it's still just us. Oh, good. There's Nina. There's Hi. It, huh? Hi, Nina. Hi. Okay. Hello. How are you guys all doing? All right. Good. I oh. just heard my daughter on uh, KGO radio from, she's in DC, but it was in San Francisco. I just listened to it. <laughs> yeah. oh. Hi, Tara. We didn't see you last time. Oh, she's muted? You're on mute, Tara. <laughs> Sorry, I was on another screen. Couldn't find the mute button. Yes, I'm here. The um, city changed their policies about staff presenting. So now staff can be on video. <laughs> so I was thinking you were going to be presenting, but we were only going to see hear your voice and not your I face. know. Well, that was the previous standard. So it's yeah. nice to be more normal, I guess. <laughs> well, I miss you guys. Yeah, oh, I miss seeing everybody hard. in person. Strange eight months. I miss just seeing people in person, period, <laughs> yes. How you doing, Lisa? I'm doing okay. I'm doing, okay. I'm doing fine on this, you know, eve of the election. Oh, you know, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I think everybody's a bit anxious, but, um, first, you know, I'm okay. Good. All right. So it's 331. I think we have. Are we ready, Eileen? We are. The only person that we're missing at this point is, is Jeff, uh, member Nathan Smith. Okay. All right. All right. I call this meeting to order. Okay. Um, let the record reflect that everyone um, is present with the exception of member Nathan Smith. 
and oh and the other okay thank you so due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders in dash 25 dash 20 and in 29 dash 20 which suspends certain requirements of the brown act and and the order of the health health officer of the county of sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID 19. the art and public places committee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using zoom webinar Committee members and staff are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distance. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as notice, noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three, public comment or during or public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature or pressing star nine on their phone. Then they will be giving, given the ability to address the committee. The recording secretary will take role, but you, will you go you ahead? You know and what, um, at this point, um, let me just amend that rule to say that all members are present. Okay, great. Next up on the agenda is number three, public comment. And- There are currently no more raised. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, there are currently no hands raised. Okay. Thank you. Then we can go ahead. Um, we, I saw Nathan and then I don't see Nathan. Oh. Here. There he is, okay. Since we do not have any um, comments from the public, let's go ahead and move on to the next number. Number four, approval of minutes. Um, 4.1 copies of February 3rd, 2020 meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, do I have a motion to approve these minutes as written? Yes. So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting minutes approved as written. Moving on to 4.2, copies of June 29th, 2020 special meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? Approved, so moved. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minute meetings approved as written. Moving on to the next item on the agenda, number five, scheduled items. 5.1, Creek Bridge mural design. Stephanie Lennox will, be, will present a community art project proposed for a creek overpass wall on, the, on Gamay Street. Did I say that right? Gamay Street in Northwest Santa Rosa. The Transportation and Public Works Department has approved this location for an art project and the Creek Stewardship Program supports the mural. Great, thank you, Lisa, um, Chair Puentes. I will go ahead and introduce Stephanie Lennox and Gio Benedetti. Um, Stephanie Lennox, you may recall, has worked with Art Start in some environmental uh, awareness projects with the um, storm drain um, installations. Um, and she is here to present the uh, design and proposal for this mural. And similar to previous projects that are community driven, not funded by um, public art funds or the committee, um, it, is a, it is a design approval that they are seeking for this project. Thank you. Go ahead, Stephanie. All right, hi, and I'd also like to bring in Gio Benedetti, who's here representing Art Start. And um, we as a team, are very appreciative of your time to give you this information and to seek your approval of, of this concept of this mural here, as well as just wanted to inform you about the overall idea um, of this project. So I am Stephanie Lennox. And then um, Tara is going to be my clicker for the slideshow. So if you would just do, I think, three clicks, we'll get this first slide set up. Um, 
with our collaborators, Art Start. I'm in Virichment, but the city of Santa Rosa hires me to do their um, environmental education, outreach, and stewardship actions. And as Tara mentioned, we uh, last time this team was before you was in 2017 when we were asking for approval of our wee small curbside murals. Um, to have people be able to see that the storm drains are indeed um, holes that lead to the closest creek. The water doesn't stop. It doesn't get treated or cleaned. It's a direct delivery system. And if you click one more time there, you'll see that it's just building upon our previous efforts to just constantly be helping our citizenry be aware of the fact that our creeks are here. They need our protection. They need our care. And if you do one more click, you'll see the R's to protect um, sign there too. So we've got these two things happening and we want to continue on with these successes by having the potential possibility to be doing um, Creek Bridge murals. And um, yeah, we've been doing great. We have over 20 drains done in Santa Rosa. We are expanded beyond Santa Rosa now into other um, communities that have seen these murals and have wanted to have them for their own city. So we're, we're wanting to ride on the theme of this um, to explain to you what we're, what we're thinking about the Creek Bridge murals, as well as just the successes of these murals themselves, especially being right down um, on the curb. And Gio will speak more to that. Okay, if you click again. Um, you have these two or four pages um, that we prepared just to have all this information in your hands. If you do um, one more click, Tara, that's the second page. So everything we're talking about here is on this um, package, this document that you have. All right, one more click. So the idea of this pilot project is that we would take this particular location on the Gamay Street Bridge over Steel Creek and um, install a Creek Bridge mural on it. And then from that and from all the different ways that we're pulling in the community, we'd be able to create a, a robust project um, and an offering for other neighborhoods who would like to do the same thing. One more click um, and we are trying to have Creek themed murals on the sides of a bridge um, to bring joy and beauty and inspiration for neighborhoods to see their creeks and to care for their creeks, resulting in real um, uh, water quality and health benefits of the creeks. And another click. So here's our location. And um, Tara, you can just kind of click and tell all of my text is on there. I'm just placing us here. It's at the corner of Zinfandel, Gamay, and Jennings. You can see Biella in the background, Biella Elementary School in the background. Um, that's Steel Creek as it runs underneath in this case where we're standing to take the picture um, and going downstream. And then I've got circled in orange there, that location, uh, the, the bridge, a face, uh, abutment is another word that we're calling it. All right, I believe it's Gio's turn to take it away. Hi everybody, my name is Gio Benedetti. Um, I hope you can see me. I can't see me on the screen, so I'm just going to go with faith and hope. Um, I'm representing Art Start. I'm the project lead on the Art on the Streets for Clean Creeks. And I, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more, but my apprentice and I, uh, I just graduated uh, high school, senior, now freshman at the junior college. Her name's Malia Marcoux. She and I made a cartoon to really just I'll let you know everything about this project in the goofiest way, yet also most accurate way possible. So um, Tara, if you would, wouldn't would mind playing that little video that I think is next on the slideshow. Yeah, I think we have that up close mural and then we have your video. This is the true heart and mission of the project. I'll do a little One drum more. here. It's all right. We're working on getting that back up. Hold on one moment. Holding on. And then um, once it's done, we can keep rolling through the slideshow. I have like, I think I get one more slide on there just to, to talk about the art piece. Ooh, here it comes. <laughs> Huh? Or not. Maybe. If it doesn't go, I can just tell you all about it. It's the big reveal. That's all right. It might be. It might make more sense to just go to the next slide. That's fine. 
Okay, so first of all, the cartoon was great and we were stick figures and uh, it was delightful. And just imagine a delightful cartoon that really just enthused you about the project. And now moving on, um, this is the uh, proposed artwork that we would put on there. All of these fish designs are designs that we've already done. They're tested and proven. We put them up on curbs all across Sonoma County. Um, so we'd just be enlarging them uh, some of them to just bring out the impact and make them big and vibrant and beautiful. Um, they are all native species to our creeks. The community would also be invited to uh, paint with us. So we've been making little kits during COVID and we send out these kits full of paint and we have instructional videos that show people how to put the paints on our mural fabric so that people can paint their own fish or their own rocks or pieces of foliage we collect them and then we are able to install these big murals that have um, however many community members we can get to participate, we get all of their art up. So we reach out to the community of all ages to get their art up there. And then the installation is also open. We can get some community members involved in that as well as the usual art start young adult apprentices. And that's what it'll look like ish. And there's a budget. I think you all have this in your packet. So if there's any questions on budget, let us know. We are not looking for funding directly from you. We're looking for permission, but this is what uh, our budget looks like if you're curious and we'll be looking for funding on our own. Yes. Um, Monica, can you wait till they're done after and then we can go through questions from the um, members? Okay. If that can be... All right. Thank you. I'm gonna pass it back over to Stephanie, high five. All right, with just one more click, we're gonna bring back our mission statement and we appreciate your consideration for helping us continue to inspire Santa Rosa to see and care deeply for our creeks. Ta-da. <laughs> All right, All right. Do any committee members have any questions for Stephanie or Gio regarding this item? If so, you please raise your hand. And just a reminder, this question's only at this time, no discussion. Monica? Oh, oh well, uh, uh, my question is, these uh, fish are going to be painted separately and glued on. Is that what I is happening? Yeah, so the, the process uses a material, um, it's got a bunch of names, we call it a poly tab over at the Art Start Warehouse, and it is a mural fabric, and you apply it, yeah, you, you glue it, there, you get some good adhesive, um, and then you are able to adhere it to whatever. We've been putting it on curbs for the last uh, three, four years, um, putting it on, uh, on walls, on floors, kind of everywhere. And then you, you apply a sealant and it's, it's great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I should add that there will, the, the backgrounds will be painted. So there will be actual painting on the, on the bridge. And then once the backgrounds are there, then you apply the, the pre-painted poly tab elements and then you seal the entire thing. A question. I know you've been doing this for a few years and I've seen many of them all around and um, they look still really good. Have any of those been replaced? How long do you think they're going to, going to last? Or I just, you know, what yeah, is absolutely. this? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the curb ones that we've done have been up for I think three years, but this actual material and the way that it's that we've done these murals, I, I just came on with Art Start in July. So this is what I have learned from the creative director, uh, Jennifer Mygat Tatum. And uh, she was saying that some of the murals that they put up with the poly tab, um, adhering it, sealing it, have been up for over 20 years and they haven't had issues. So it is pretty uh, bulletproof. If there is an issue, you can go in and you can clean it up and reseal. And because it's individual elements, not the entire mural, um, if, if for whatever reason, an individual element was peeling, you could go in and either fix that or replace it without too much actual structural or, or it, you know, dealing with the entire mural. And the, the first ones we did were in the railroad square area. 
And those ones are still looking great. None of those elements have been replaced. I just go once or twice a year with a group of interested community members, students, and we just take uh, just a wet cloth and we just wipe away the grime. That's the only thing that's happening is that there's this layer of grime that's building up. So I'll drive past them. Oh yeah, I got to get that one on the list. So that's the maintenance so far that they have required to continue to look vibrant. Yes. I saw those over the weekend, just this past weekend, and they looked great. And that's why I was asking. <laughs> I think there's no better test of the stability of that process and the mural than putting it right down next to car tires for years yes. on end. Yeah. Do we have any other questions from the board? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you have a list where we, if we wanted to go look at some of these, um, do you have a list you could send us? I would love to get you a list of the current Sonoma County and or Santa Rosa locations for these storm drains. Great. Yeah. Nathan? Oh, it sounds good. Jeff. Oh, oh wait. It was Jeff. Oh, oh Jeff. I gotta do full screen, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, uh, well, first of all, I, I really like the Art Start projects and um, near the museum where, where um, you know, I'm located, the, um, you know, the curb, curb looks great. And all of them look great. Um, I'm just curious about these bridges. Are they all at street level, like the one um, that you're doing as a pilot or are any of them in, um, uh, 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 let's say a more challenging uh, location where access or, or um, scaffolding is required or anything like that? Uh. That's a good question. We did pick this pilot location to be, um, you know, a lower, there's a lot of traffic that goes through there, but there's a stop sign right there. So that creates a little bit of an ease for the people installing it. And then the city and the Creek Stewardship Program is constantly available to us to help us with traffic control and those other elements to keep the project um, you know, rolling along safely. And uh, we have throughout the installation of the storm drain murals have found that there really are no two storm drain uh, curb faces that are similar. Each one comes with its own set of challenges and Gio can speak much more to that um, because he kind of problem solves those challenges. You know, one might be more like full of ruts and pits and one might be more of like a kind of a grooved texture to it. Um, so we've had many different kind of surfaces to, you know, apply the same mural technique to. And so I have noticed that lots of the bridges around uh, going over our creeks are similar to that. Each one's kind of got a little bit of a different, you know, construction and a face and a, and a texture to it. Does that um, answer your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Gio, you, yeah, no? Okay. Just when, when we've kicked around the ideas, the, that, that's about the, the tallest of the mural bridges, the, the creek bridges that we've been thinking about mur doing murals on. Some of them are a little bit lower, but uh, so far nothing that would be that high or would require any sort of scaffolding. Hi, Lisa, I have a question. Yes, <laughs> In to dovetail off of Jeff's question about other locations that you have been identifying for murals, um, have the majority of them been in Sonoma County or are you looking outside of the area? They've all been in Santa Rosa and um, the idea was like floated, uh, just, just the beginnings of it in Roner Park, but um, the only real serious uh, serious inquiries were, were all Santa Rosa uh, Creek bridges from all of our, our little get togethers. Another Great. reason we chose this location is because a neighbor who lives in that neighborhood um, had the original vision of what a great backdrop and how she believed it would help citizens take better care of the creek by just, you know, really, you know, beautifying that bridge face and, you know, with the creek life that is actually there. And the hope of this project is that we would be able to find the next location based on interest from the community to have one in their neighborhood. So that it would be driven by community desire and participation and um, 
that's just like another element of why we're where we haven't picked like oh this is where we want to go next and this is where we want to go next if, if that makes sense we're hoping that the community will see that be able to reach out and um, begin to be part of the process of trying to create one in their neighborhoods Melanie do you anticipate that the budget will remain the same for every single project going forward or some economies of scale to get the price down um, I think that we could, I think it could absolutely be. I think one of the things that's really uh, a little bit more challenging is a lot of the time Art Start can, we can have a bunch of apprentices and volunteers really helping to do a lot of the install work. And right now we're really limited in how many people we can have out installing a project. Mm -hmm. So it ends up taking a little bit longer and it ends up being more hours for the lead artists who are all paid um, independent contractors. Mm -hmm. So as, as soon as we can have more people in a space, yeah, I could definitely see the price coming down. Um, okay. And also a lot of it is based on um, square footage. Um, once, the, oh, there's some, there's some line items in there also that uh, are for the beginnings of a project where we have to create the video tutorials and mm -hmm step-by-step -step processes to send out to any community or um, apprentice members that want to paint remotely. So once that's done off of the first one, so long as the design doesn't change, those would not be re reoccurring costs. So the, the fish that we see in the, um, in the presentation, those same fish, maybe in a different format, would be replicated throughout all the different bridges. Is that the theory? Yep. Okay. Okay. I had one more question about follow up when you're stating that the intent is for murals to be community interest driven. Where should community members reach out to in terms of a potential location? Would that be reaching out to you, Stephanie, or uh, reaching out to Art Start? Um, how was that envisioned in terms of uh, public outreach? That's a great question. And both Art Start and myself, which I'm representing the Creek Stewardship Program, are available to be contacted to get a conversation, a ball rolling. And we are considering putting on, um, and I guess I'm, since we considered it, we probably should have said something to you guys, um, the QR codes that are out there that somebody could zoop zoop with their phone and then learn more information about it. Um, it's usually just a little, you know, Mm -hmm. tiny feature that's there but that's one of the things we were considering you know to answer any questions you might have about you know who, who did this mural and what's it about and and then that contact information too and then one more question in terms of reaching out for the packages for painting remotely uh is that a connection with art start how, how does that connection is that made to in, inquire about the packages for painting? Um, for uh, for kind of each project that comes up, there's almost always a, a community element that's driving it. Um, so for this particular one, there's the elementary school right next to the bridge and the community member that brought the idea to us um, has connections to her residential community and to, um, there's some other uh, housing developments in and around there. So that that's kind of our, our inroad. And then we would just be following up on that. If we don't get any interest from those, then there's also just the, the larger pool of Art Start volunteers, Art Start apprentices, and then our, um, you know, our, our art teacher allies at the different schools. So it, it would be like the most direct community access and then it, it would get a little bit more removed, but still keeping it to interested Sonoma County artists as it moves out of those spheres. And with the storm drain project, we've shared that responsibility of creating kits and distributing kits. And so it's, you know, I work at Biela school, you know, helping them learn about their Creek. And so I would probably bring a kit with me and drop that off in a normal year, um, just slightly more organizing in this type of a year. Um, and so we, we both kind of remain available to support the project by distributing kits. 
Any more questions? Okay. Eileen, do we have any public comments regarding this item? No, we have no hands raised at this time. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the artwork design? I make a, so move. a motion to approve the artwork design. Do I have a second? second? I'll second. You. Okay. Jeff? Okay. Okay, discussion is now open for this item. Committee members wishing to comment or discuss, please physically raise your hand. Anyone? Okay. All right. Then I'd like to call a vote to approve the artwork design as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The motion passes unanimously and um, let's see here. Sorry about that. Okay, so the motion passes. <laughs> Thanks, committee. Yes. Really Thanks appreciate much, your support. Um, how would you like us to keep you updated and informed on our progress? Tara? Hey, uh, thank you. Stephanie, I think if you and or Geo, anyone else who wants to just um, let me know when it's being installed. Um, if there are uh, things you want the committee to know or be aware of, um, they did ask for information about the other storm drains. So any communication you would want with the committee, please send to me and then I can distribute that. But I think definitely knowing when it's getting installed um, so that they can come out and take a look if they'd like, that would be great. Okay, great. And thank you for asking for that list of storm drains. I've been wanting to create a, a list so that we can have community members, you know, have a little bit of a fun scavenger hunt, mm -hmm. looking for that, that beautiful art out there. And then as we continue to hopefully maybe find, you know, another location in a while, did you, do you want us to come back to you and ask again for another location approval? So we'll have to ha discuss that generally as our, um, as our kind of procedures dictate now, um, any location that's city owned, if it's an artwork, um, needs this committee's approval. So uh, we would work through that location by location. But um, what I would say is we could work with you on if you if you have identified a variety of locations that you may be interested in doing this on, or you have interest from neighborhoods or funding, um, perhaps we could put that together as a package. So to be more efficient, not have, have to have you come back every time. So let's discuss that and I'd be ha happy to work with you on that. Okay, fantastic. And then we are circling around the encroachment permit and getting that fully set up. And um, Tara, did you have a contact person? Still waiting. Yes, I'm still waiting to hear back from our engineering division. As soon okay. as you, I'll make sure that you are put in contact with the right person. All right, great. Well, those were all my um, parts. Thanks again for your time and your support. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Gio. Thank you all very much. It looks great. Thank you, guys. Yes. All right. OK, next item on the agenda, 5.2, open and out program report. Tara will now present more information on this item. Tara? Great, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to finally present this uh, report of the art that has been um, placed within the open and out footprint downtown. Um, uh, if you recall back at our June 29th special meeting, I presented the opportunity to allocate the funding that the committee had set aside for temporary art in Courthouse Square towards this project and the committee approved that proposal. So $40,000 of funding went towards art um, in the open and out footprint and as a part of this program. So I'm very happy to finally show you um, if you haven't seen it all in person, um, but I put together a presentation with the help of Cadence, our um, partner at uh, the Downtown Action Organization and Metro Chamber, um, this presentation that shows the artwork that has been funded by the $40,000. Um, there's a larger group, wider group of artwork that encompasses the other funding sources as well. But I thought I would start with what um, the funding from this committee has gone towards and then answer any questions that you have. And a lot of this, I'll try to remember and mention which ones are still up that you could go see in person if you haven't already. 
and some have come down already. Um, this is a snapshot of the website, which I think I've sent in a couple email updates to the committee. <clears throat> the openandoutsr.com website has a art walk map on it. And if you click on that map, it actually shows you the location of each one. And then if you click on each of those little icons, it'll tell you more about the artwork. This is just a picture, not interactive, but if you go on the actual website, it will show you that. Next slide. This is a piece um, by Jane Ingram Allen, which you can still see, although the color in the petals has faded just a little bit, and it will be up in place through the um, end of our current phase of open and out, which is through January 31st. Um, it was installed in early August, and it's on 4th Street in a vacant storefront. Next slide. Um, this was a mural. I think one of these had a video, um, but we're in, you don't have the PowerPoint version of this available, do you, Eileen? I hate to switch midstream. Maybe we'll come back to it later. Let's just go through this for now. Um, so this was a, a mural actually on the street of a labyrinth on the 700 block of 4th Street by Melissa Jones. Um, it was interactive. You could walk the mural. There were kind of instructions assigned that in, in, invited you to engage with it. Um, it's not there anymore. It was made with tempera paint, which is easily wash, wash easily washes away with rain. And when we were um, anticipating some rain a couple weekends ago, which really was more like a drizzle, um, uh, we had to wash it off before it rained per our storm drain requirements. So it's no longer there, but it was um, a fun thing to interact with. Next slide. This piece is still there and you can see it. Um, it's on the corner of 4th and E streets. It is called Foamy Delight by a local sculptor, Adrian Littman. Um, it will probably be up ongoing for a while. Um, the temporary nature of these varies project to project. They were all intended to be temporary to some extent, but some last um, a weekend, some last one month, some last multiple months. So next slide. Um, this is a mural piece installed on the exterior of um, Belly, yeah, Belly Left Coast Kitchen's uh, parklet out in the street on the 500 block of 4th Street um, by Ray Sumster. Uh, sorry, Sumster. Next slide. Again, this format for some of the art projects was pretty popular to have artists design and create pieces that were installed on the kind of barriers around different parklets for restaurants uh, within the street area. So this is another one of those by Ann Bumgardner. Um, this was uh, right in front and still is a part of Gerard's outdoor seating area, um, the 700 block of 4th Street. Next slide. Here's another one, although this one has a kind of amorphous shape um, and doesn't conform to the rectangular shapes of the sides of the parklet by Josh Lawyer um, uh, mural, parklet mural on the outside. I believe this one is in front of um, Jojo Sushi's parklet. Oh no, is this Jojo? No, that's Sing Hao. Sorry, Sing Hao, Sing Hao restaurant. Okay, sorry, next slide. This was an interesting piece done by MJ Lindo Lawyer um, that we had her do. It was much more temporary than some of the other ones, but she did a design for social distancing circles within the green space at Courthouse Square, um, encouraging people to gather without being too close to one another. So, um, so the design was kind of cool. It was made with um, field marking spray paint, essentially. Same thing you would use for like marking a soccer field or a baseball field. Um, and so it's gone now, it's, it's washed and worn away, but it was, it was probably visible for about two weeks, I would say. Next slide. Um, this is a piece done by Art Start with the lead artist, Rima. Um, you may know Rima Marquez. She has done the Monarch Project um, and also works on large scale um, social justice themed murals. Um, this was a piece that was a part of her Monarch project done through Art Start um, butterfly decal, the same material that the um, that the Creek mural was just talking about. It's a thin fabric type material that's adhered to um, various surfaces, and this is on a utility 
signal box right on the north side of Courthouse Square along 4th Street. Next slide. This is another parklet mural in front of the 4th Street Social Club. Um, this was by Amanda Lynn and it's still up. You can go check it out. It's very vibrant and colorful. Next slide. This is still up and you can see it. There's three different locations within the 4th Street area. Um, Adam Sharon, if you recall, did a installation through a grant he received from Creative Sonoma on another city property um, a couple years ago. It was on um, that college and 4th Street split. Um, there was a light installation there. This is very similar, same materials, same idea. Um, these are up in the trees, come on at dusk, stay on um, until morning. And um, again, there's three different locations within the 4th Street area. Next slide. This pro uh, project is in progress that has not been completed yet, but Alex Cole will be painting um, the large tall pillars that say downtown San Rosa or San Rosa downtown. Um, there's just four different ones throughout different locations as you kind of head into downtown. She'll be painting them with this kind of color palette, abstract landscape type designs. And we're working with her. She should be installing those very shortly within the next couple weeks. Next slide. These are really fun, um, great for a Halloween theme too. They're monster bollards. So um, Jill uh, Valavanis, sorry, I always pronounce her last name wrong. Um, Valavanis, she created these uh, nylon, sewn nylon slip covers for the bollards along the 4th Street side of Courthouse Square that are all little different monster designs. Next slide. And these will be up for another couple of weeks. I think they're coming down the weekend, um, the week of, of Thanksgiving. So another couple of weeks. The, this is a project by Martin Zunega and they are um, large drum sculptures that are painted. Um, they were painted with the help of local um, youth and they have messages to encourage people to go vote. Um, they are in the north part. These are not, these pictures are not taken on site um, but they are installed currently on the north end of Courthouse Square, right in the space where the permanent um, installation will eventually go for the square. Next slide. Is that the last one? Yeah, okay. So um, I think there was one very short video of the mural, of the uh, labyrinth mural, but um, it, it, that's okay, Eileen, don't worry about going to find it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we were showing you all of the wonderful temporary pieces that were created with the funding from the Art and Public Places Committee and the Public Art Fund. And uh, the projects are now continuing. Originally, um, Open and Out was slated to go through um, October 15th, um, but because our current health order situation and the need for continuing outdoor space for restaurants in particular, um, the city has extended the permit for the program to last now through January 31st. Um, that may be extended again. We don't know yet. Um, and then changes are happening like the 600 block of 4th Street is now reopened to vehicle traffic. So there's some changes that are happening within that footprint. Um, but there are still more arts activities planned for the winter months. Uh, the Metro Chamber is honoring their traditional winter lights um, exhibit or their winter lights event that they're not able to have the same way this year, but they're going to extend it from the Friday after Thanksgiving through January 1st um, in terms of creating a kind of winter environment with activities for kids with treasure hunts and winter themed uh, installation. So there will be some activity um, uh, activating the space in the, in the winter months as well. Um, so I think that's it. Oh, I wanted to share that um, all told um, with a, the other funding sources that we were able to uh, combine with the public art funding, um, over $100,000 was spent on, on art, temporary art installations. Um, so that includes the 40,000 from uh, public art fund and includes um, other funding sources such as um, the Creative Sonoma NEA grant, um, as well as private um, donations and um, the Metro Chamber and Downtown Action Organization. Um, and that, so that 100,000 went towards um, 25 different installations. So I think that's what I wanted to share with you today. I'm happy to answer any questions.
So I've seen a couple things um, that I thought were part of this open and out program downtown, but you didn't show them. And I'm curious um, if you know, maybe they were funded by some of this other organizations you just mentioned. One is this gold um, mailbox that's on Courthouse Square. And the other one is um, across the street from Corex, I think, that is a kind of a display with some small art pieces in it. Do you know? Yes, yes. Uh, both of those, both of those are a part of the open and out program, but they both were funded separately. So the golden mailbox is actually um, a project by Jessica Rasmussen, who works for the public art program, um, and um, some some collaborators who helped her with that project. Um, so it was funded through the open and out program, just from a different pot of funds, essentially. So it's still a part of this project. Um, so was the Tiny Galleries, which is the display you're speaking of. It's an artist exchange program where small pieces are shown in, in, in kind of like a vending machine format and um, an artist can trade their art for a piece of art that's currently in the case. Um, that was done by um, uh, Robert Van Vanderwald and Don Thomas, and it was funded separately through a Creative Sonoma grant that they had received, um, but hadn't been able to place it anywhere yet. And so it was just a great collaboration to be able to include it within the footprint of Open and Out. So Tara, do you know, um, besides those two pieces that I mentioned, are there others? Um... Yeah, there's a handful of others. So I believe the list um, that I shared with you is of 15 pieces. And so there's 10 additional pieces. You just mentioned two of them. So there's eight more um, that are part of the Open and Out program, but weren't specifically funded through the available funding from this uh, committee. So um, there's a project that is, um, uh, was done by Scape. It's a street mural across from like Beer Baron and um, um, kind of on that block of 4th Street. Um, that was done, like I said, by Scape, Sonoma County artists promoting equity. Uh, Rima Markin was the lead artist again on that. That was one of the projects that was specifically funded through Creative Sonoma's grant um, from the NEA. Um, and there's there's a few others, but those, those three are the main ones that are coming to mind. There, there were... Um, some temporary uh, activations of the space um, through performers. So like Ballet Folklorico came out one weekend and did little pop-up like five minute performances on different um, corners in the closed area. Um, uh, Tyco, Sonoma County Tyco did some performances as well. Um, and then there was a couple chalk installations that were very temporary, only lasted a weekend or so. Um, those are the ones that I, that I know of. So how are these publicized? I mean, if, if you had kids and you want to take them on an outing downtown or whatever is, I guess, um, you know, there's, could you do QR codes for that or is that just too temporary? So these were all marked with a sticker that essentially was placed on the ground in most cases next to each piece that kind of brand them as open and out with the website. Um, so you knew it was a part of the Open and Out program and you could go to the website to find more information. Um, and then pretty much all of the marketing was for the art itself was done through social media. So the downtown Santa Rosa Instagram and Facebook pages did post multiple times a day with pictures of all of the art to try to get people to come check them out. Monica, did you have a question? Could there be a listing of some of those? Um... You're, you're still on mute. Um, Nina asked my question, so that okay, uh, that's fine. Okay, but I'm uh, but I I'm sorry I haven't been checking out that uh, Instagram site that you've been posting on. It's what is it called? Um, it's down, downtown SR. Um, so let's see. I can I can make sure you. I I can't remember if I I may have sent it in a previous email, but I'll make sure that you have it after this meeting. Um, it's okay. the downtown action organization. So the downtown districts, um, social media channels, um, they are the ones that have been promoting it. Okay. 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 All right. So we're ready to go on to the next agenda item. 5.3 project updates. Tara. Sure. Great. Um, there weren't, Eileen, there weren't any comments on that item, correct? 
No, public, there were no sorry, public, public comments. comments. Okay. Great. Okay, okay. so um, the next item is just a project update um, item for the variety of other projects we've been um, working on throughout this strange last several months. Um, I have been sending project updates uh, every month when we, especially when we don't have a meeting um, to keep you all informed. So not all of this is brand new information, but I wanted to let you know um, where we stand with each of the projects that we have that have been active over the last several months. So Coffee Neighborhood Park reopened last week. It was um, just a really wonderful uh, completion to a, a very quick in the scope of um, construction projects, um, but, a, but a long journey for that neighborhood uh, for sure and everyone helping with the project. So um, because of COVID and the restrictions, we were not able to hold a traditional um, park opening ceremony, dedication ceremony, or anything in person. So our city's communication and marketing team put together a video, um, which uh, included interviews from various stakeholders and, um, and neighbors and showed the park, showed drone vid video footage of the park, it was a really sweet video. I believe I sent that out in a link um, to all of you last week. Um, we will be working with the artists specifically probably in the next couple weeks to do additional publicity and outreach specifically for the art. But there was a request and a kind of, um, I don't know, a, a respect we wanted to share for the art, uh, for the park itself being reopened and completed and, um, and then follow up um, after the fact with more information about the art. We still can't gather in person to celebrate the art, unfortunately, but we will be doing more information um, through social media and on our website to celebrate that the art has been installed and can be enjoyed now in person, you know, one family at a time. <laughs> so, um, so that's what's going on with Coffee Park. Um, the Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square project has, has been kind of inching along. The selection committee, selection panel has been doing an amazing job um, with their thoroughness and thoughtfulness, but we have been delayed obviously by current events, including the glass fire. So where we are at now is the selection committee has narrowed down the five finalists to two finalists who they are now asking additional design questions of in order to make a final decision. Um, that final decision is not anticipated until after Thanksgiving. We're giving the artists um, a few weeks to respond to the questions that we are now posing to them in order for the selection panel to have um, as much information as they can to make a final decision. So um, because we have not spoken with all of the artists yet, I can't share which artists have made it to that final cut, but I will as soon as that information is shareable with you. And um, and we will have a revised timeline um, posted on our website as soon as we can, once we know um, how long the selection panel may need to make their final decision. But I'm anticipating it to be in mid, early to mid-December. Um, the public art program crisis response and strategic planning has been going on um, all kind of behind the scenes with um, two, two or yeah, two members involvement, um, two committee members involvement in different phases of that. Um, <clears throat> the meeting next week, which you all responded to a doodle poll about your availability and it looks like everyone is available to attend a special meeting a week from today. So November 9th, an agenda will be put together and issued on Wednesday with the information about that. But that is the purpose of that meeting is specifically for our consultants third plateau to do a facilitated discussion excuse me, discussion with the committee about where we are at with both of those planning processes and to get the committee's um, input into the strategic planning process. Um, so that will be what is taking place on the 9th. Um, Zach, yes, it will be our same meeting time. Um, ZAG is uh, installed, and if you haven't all seen it, you should go check it out some evening, especially now that the time change makes it a lot darker sooner. Um, it was actually installed uh, over a month ago, but the original programming that the lights had on the sculpture 
were the demo version of the program and not the artist programming. And so it was a couple of weeks before he was able to correct that. Um, it is now fully functioning as he intended and is quite magical to watch. Um, we have some photos that we had a photographer taken. We will again be doing our own outreach to publicize that that piece is finally complete and installed. Unfortunately, again, we can't gather in person like we normally would to celebrate and dedicate that piece but um, it is up and we will be sharing that um, as soon as we can. I think that is everything that I had on my list to update you on and I'm happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? Does the Zag, does the Zag sculpture, sculpture um, is that um, activated at dusk or? Um... Yes, correct. So it's connected to the same, they're called photocell, I believe, sensors that turn on street lights in your neighborhood. So um, it, it detects when there's not enough light. So at dusk, turns on and then will turn off uh, early morning. Anyone else? Any questions for Tara? Eileen, do we have any um, public comments? Or questions? There are no public comments at this time. Okay, then we'll go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. And number six, committee member reports. Does anybody have any reports that they would like to, to announce or any events <laughs> that they would like to? Yeah. Jeff? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I wanna thank the city of Santa Rosa through um, Inside Out um, uh, Santa Rosa for being a sponsor of our Dia de los Muertos um, outdoor exhibition in the Museum of Sonoma County's Sculpture Garden. Uh, we opened the exhibition a couple of weekends ago and have had um, very, very good attendance. Of course, masks are required and uh, we um, only allow up to 30 people at a time so um, people can social distance. But over this past weekend, starting Saturday night and, and um, winding up um, for tonight, we have evening hours from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's illuminated at night. It's a really phenomenal um, installation. Um, some of the artists who were involved, uh, for example, um, um, Mario Uribe and Martin Zuniga, um, of course, have been really involved with uh, public art projects around, uh, around the city. Um, anyway, it's really, really worth seeing if you haven't come down to uh, check it out. And um, we, um, Tara, I kept thinking I had to send you an email to uh, say thank you for the, the funding. I'm just gonna say it in person, well, sort of virtually in person here. Um, we appreciate the support. And um, the, the exhibition will continue um, with day, daytime hours from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. this coming Thursday through Sunday. And um, then we'll, we'll deinstall de it. Um, anyway, uh, it's, it's really a, a great project. And I'm glad to be able to uh, provide this sort of uh, Dia de los Muertos um, uh, activity and exhibition for the uh, community, even in time of COVID. Oh, by the way, we've had, um, I think, at last count, over 600 people have come through, you know, over a couple of weekends. So it's, um, it's, it's really been popular. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I just wanted to clarify the funding that the city was able to provide towards that sponsorship came from our um, tourism fund. So it came through our Out There and Insight Out There, Out there campaign. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, I think I got that a little bit wrong, but uh, thank you, Tara. <laughs> so I missed the presentation that you had for that. Is that is there a recording available for that? Uh, which one? We had a couple. Oh, are you are you talking uh, about honoring the, the dead? That, the are, are you are exactly. you referring to honoring the dead, uh, which yes. was um, yes. a comparative cultural and religious um, traditions around death and dying? That was on Thursday. Yes, um, it was recorded. I think it's being edited and should be hopefully, um, we'll put the link out this week. I, I don't know for sure, but it, it, it will be available. And if you're on, if you get our um, emails every week, 
or if you are um, if you like the museum on Facebook, you'll you'll get the link. You'll see it. Perfect. Monica, you're on mute too, Monica. No, I think I unmuted. Oh, there. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Jeff. I I want to go see that exhibit, but um, the I think I mentioned last time that I was going to be in an exhibit in in Calistoga and it, it's up in spite of all the smoke and fire and everything. It's called Hope is the Thing and there are uh, 21 artists in it and it's really a great show. It's really a good thing. I hope you all can get up there to see it at Sophie Contemporary Arts. Great. Does anyone else have any announcements? Anything? Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to the next item on the next item on the agenda, and that is number seven, department reports. Tara, do you have anything for department reports? I don't think I have anything at this time. Thank you. All righty then. Then the the next so the next item on the agenda is adjournment, and um, our next regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, December seventh, um, and. This meeting is now adjourned. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, thank you.